Thank you for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, inflation still on the rise, driving up food prices and more. We'll take a look at the developments. Plus, from gender policies to mask mandates, some parents are upset with what's happening in schools in America. I was taught at a very young age what to look for in socialism. What do they do? They go right to the children. See how this could affect Democrats in the upcoming midterms and then later. I will exalt him his name we sit down with one of the most influential music ministry leaders of our time, Dr. Judith Christie McAllister. She talks about our heart for missions and helping other ministers of music and worship leaders. When I talk to ministers of music and worship leaders, I say, listen, stay connected to the vision of the house because the vision of the house can ultimately bless you. All these stories and more coming up next from the CBN Newsroom. This is CBN Newswatch. We began this half hour with gas prices going down, but inflation still on the rise. That is the consensus from the August Consumer Price Index numbers released Tuesday. Overall, inflation still running at an annual rate of more than 8%, mainly because of increased costs for food, electricity, and other goods and services. Charlene Aaron has more on our top story. The latest report showed inflation is still rising. That rattled the stock market Tuesday, the Dow plunging some 1,200 points and raises concerns of a possible recession. Let's just hope that's a one-day phenomenon and not the start of a trend. But that, as you said, that was the worst day for the stock market this year. And those are big, big declines. The news also bad for consumers, squeezed with higher prices on just about everything. You're supposed to try to survive when the cheapest apartment in Phoenix is $1,000 a month. Prices for groceries also way up, more than 13% from last year. This single mom struggling to put food on the table. What else can you do, starve? Like, you have to buy it. It, it kind of is what it is. Do we like it? No, but I deal with the prices. On CBN's Faith Nation, economist Stephen Moore of FreedomWorks said families are lagging behind big time. We estimate that uh, the average uh, family has lost somewhere between three and four thousand dollars of purchasing power because of this um, stampede of inflation that doesn't seem like it's going away anytime soon. Still, President Biden claims the nation's other economic indicators are all positive. He even invited Democrats to the White House to celebrate the recent spending bill that they named the Inflation Reduction Act. The economy is still strong, unemployment's low, jobs are up, manufacturing's good, so I think it's a uh, I think we're going to be fine. They may be taking a victory lap at the White House, but I can tell you one thing, the American people are not, because they are feeling the direct impact of this every single day. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve is expected to raise rates by another three quarters of a percent or more next week, making everything from car loans to credit card debt even more expensive. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. There is an abortion rights battle on Capitol Hill nearly three months after the overturning of Roe versus Wade from the United States Supreme Court. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham introduced new legislation that would put a federal ban on most abortions after 15 weeks. The bill would provide exceptions for rape, incest, and to save a mother's life. This is causing controversy in the Republican Party, with Senator Mitch McConnell saying this should be dealt with on the state level. Meanwhile, Democrats are responding, saying Graham's bill proposal is extreme and hopes this motivates voter turnout during the midterms. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says the White House is fighting for progress. Republicans in Congress are focused on taking rights away from millions, millions of women across the country. While we are fighting for progress, they are fighting to take us back. Senator Graham's abortion bill would need 60 votes in the Senate to advance over Democrats who are in the majority. The Justice Department is apparently expanding its investigation into the January 6th Capitol riot. Dozens of subpoenas have been issued to aides of former President Donald Trump. Meanwhile, Trump's legal team is making a startling claim about those documents stored at his home. CBN Washington correspondent Matt Galka reports. The Department of Justice has seemingly ramped up its investigation into former President Donald Trump and his potential role in the January 6th riots. They've issued subpoenas to associates and advisors of the former president. The DOJ issued about 40 or so subpoenas in the past week to people in Trump's circle. 
The department also seized the phones of at least two former top advisors. The subpoenas are extremely broad. They're from the Capitol siege section of the United States uh, Department of Justice's uh, D.C. office, and they ask for broad categories of documents. The subpoenas reportedly relating to a variety of issues, including fundraising and an alleged plan in various states President Joe Biden won, where fake electors would cast their votes for Trump and not Biden. High-profile conservatives attempted to throw cold water on the new developments as the midterm elections loom in just eight weeks. They want to unleash corrupt partisans at the Department of Justice and the FBI to go after Donald Trump to try to distract people. The subpoenas are separate from the other high-profile case involving potentially highly sensitive documents seized from Trump's Florida residence, Mar-a-Lago. The Trump team now challenging the gravity of the investigation. In a Monday filing, the wording suggests they don't believe the documents are classified and are calling the investigation a, quote, storage dispute. They describe the records that were seized as purported classified records, which suggests that they do not concede that the documents that were taken were indeed top secret national defense information, as the Justice Department has alleged. Trump's lawyers requested a so-called special master to review the files independently and review any files that may be covered under attorney-client privilege. The DOJ stated Monday they're okay with at least one of the Trump picks, Brooklyn Judge Raymond Deary seen here in a prior courtroom sketch. It's unclear if the judge overseeing the documents case will pick Deary. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attacks promises at least one more hearing before the end of the month and potentially more in October, but potential subject matter and witnesses have not been made public yet. Matt Gelka, CBN News. A major new revelation exposing concerns over China's collection of user data on Twitter. In a Senate hearing yesterday, a whistleblower from the social media giant accusing Twitter of misleading the public over security concerns. They don't know what data they have, where it lives, or where it came from, and so, unsurprisingly, they can't protect it. And this leads to the second problem, which is the employees then have to have too much access to too much data and to too many systems. The former security chief at Twitter is accusing the company of failures in cybersecurity that make it vulnerable to exploitation. The animated children's show Peppa Pig introduced its first same-sex parent family. The episode is called Families and it aired in the United Kingdom. It shows Peppa's classmate talking about what makes her two mommies special. The episode divided viewers two years ago. A petition was created insisting a same-sex parent family be on the cartoon. The animated show is aimed at preschoolers. Coming up, see why these parents want teachers to know who's really in charge. You're going to hear how they're voicing their concerns at board meetings and taking their fight to the ballot box. We've got the story for you when we come back. Welcome back. New polls suggest Democrats could be losing credibility on an issue their party has long dominated, education. From school closures to mask mandates to gender policies, parents are angry about what they're seeing in America's classrooms, and they could shake up the midterms as the new swing voters. Tara Mershner reports. For more than two years, parents have faced challenges from school closures and mask mandates to gender policies. American education is seen as a growing concern, leading to predictions that many parents seeing red will vote that way too. There are people like me and a lot of other people out there who will gladly take your seat. Rallying cries heard round the country. Figure it out. Now, now. From infuriated parents after their kids faced months of remote learning. We're like, when can they come for their in-person education that they're entitled to by the Virginia um, state law? Many of them, largely Republican, began activist groups. We're going to talk about the need for change in the Loudoun County School Board. Launched school board recalls and filed lawsuits, not only attacking school closures. We've certainly been seeing um, an increase in referrals for therapy um, just across across the board. But also lessons in the classroom. CRT is racist. It is abusive. Pornography in textbooks. You bought $1.8 million worth of these trash books. Transgender policies. You took away my ability to parent my child. 
Even before I had any knowledge. And more. I was taught at a very young age what to look for in socialism. What do they do? They go right to the children. The anger and impact of parents getting so much attention. Enough of the toxicity and the division. And They've been crowned this election cycle's potential heavyweights. The ball is absolutely in their court. I believe that parents are beginning to have a much better sense of how much power they have. With midterms looming, a number of polls are raising red flags for Democrats, suggesting the party is losing the battle on education. I voted a straight red ticket this time, and I'm not afraid to say it because I was so angry and so frustrated. The numbers indicating as confidence falls, more voters favor conservative classroom policies. Whatever agenda is going on, uh, we need to understand what our rights are, how, we can, how easy it is to lose your freedoms. More than 80 percent say they would cross party lines for a candidate whose education platform they support. So a number as high as 82 percent is, is astounding. And also, I was pretty interested to find that it was consistent across all political ideologies. The trend is especially apparent among black parents and those of special needs children. I am. I am my child's parent. And I decide what they will be educated on. A poll of likely voters by one of the largest and most progressive teachers unions found voters trust the GOP more than Democrats to handle public education. The power of the polls on full display last fall in Virginia. Parents were certainly the swing voters uh, that delivered Virginia to the Republicans. When Republican Glenn Youngkin pulled off an unlikely upset in a state Joe Biden won handily in 2020. Oh, Joe Biden will win Virginia's 13 electoral votes. Fox News is calling the Virginia governor's race for Republican Glenn Youngkin. Youngkin made inroads across party lines by promising parents a seat at the table. I believe parents should be in charge of their okay. kids' education. While his Democrat opponent told them they should have none. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. Ron DeSantis, DeSantis, the next, next governor, governor of the state, state of Florida. Florida. Education also helped put Florida Republican Ron DeSantis in the governor's mansion. Ron DeSantis won that race because black women voted against their political party for him, specifically on the issue of school choice. And in another striking switch, a new survey shows parents overwhelmingly consider education more important than the economy or health care. Donald Trump's education secretary, Betsy DeVos, says parents are rightfully upset with the Biden administration. Are you surprised that they went so far as to essentially label parents domestic terrorists. And they're told that they cannot speak up. And if they do speak up, they have the threat of the FBI coming investigating or the National Guard even. Mm. I mean, it is just inconceivable to me. Still, pundits insist both parties have work to do. Democrats have lost trust when we look at the numbers. But it doesn't exactly mean that Republicans have gained that trust. So it creates an opportunity potentially for both sides to gather those voters. With just a few months until the election, some political observers recommend Democrats should go back to the basics. The Democrats just have to make sure that they're talking about um, the quality of our schools and making sure that children are safe and learning and not get caught up in all of these um, conversations about um, the cultural, social issues. I think that that will really resonate with swing voters. By a 32-point margin, recent polling shows parents would favor candidates who supported teaching less about race and more core subjects like math and reading. The data also suggests that education could become a single voter issue this fall among parents, meaning they may cast their ballots on this issue alone. In Washington, I'm Tara Mergener, CBN News. Still ahead, we're sitting down with Grammy-nominated recording artist Dr. Judith Christie McAllister. We've got our story when we come back.
Recording artist Dr. Drew, Judith Christie McAllister is one of the most influential music ministry leaders of our time. She was born in Harlem, New York. The Grammy-nominated choir director, songwriter, producer, and author can be found right now leading worship at Los Angeles' West Angeles Church of God in Christ. She recently re-released much of her catalog, and we caught up with her sharing her gift with the homeless alongside Kirk Franklin and Maverick City Music on Skid Row, all of whom credit her with paving the way for their careers. We are here sitting in the heart of Skid Row, if you will. Yes. You live in this, the LA area yourself. Yes. Uh -huh. What made you commit to being a part of this vision project for? Wow, say? I've always had a heart for missions and not just missions across the water, but missions right here. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. He said to those that are disenfranchised, of course, I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. So the gospel is more than just what we do in the four walls of the church. When you're out there in this area and seeing what's on the street, what ha what's happening to your heart when you see what people are homeless, struggling? What, what do you think? Well, first of all, I'm very grateful. It's, it's I'm getting emotional now because I think about so many of them that are on the street corner. But for the grace of God, go I. And I want to do everything that I can to ensure that one person, wherever I am, is lifted. You are known, if you will, as the queen of praise and worship. Where did that come from? Was it birth as a child? What happened to Judy? That <laughs> Well, I've sung all my life. Mm -hmm. um, however, it wasn't really until I came to Los Angeles and connected. The Lord connected uh, me with Bishop Charles Edward Blake. Bishop Blake, for being the quintessential worshiper that you are, we thank you. There was a vision that he had. And at that time, Ephraim, you know that we as a people did not stand in worship. It was something that was, oh, you know, yeah. you know, we, we, we were. Okay, so he said, I see a time when our people will be standing in worship and the song will be given back to the people. Praise and worship is the song of the people unto God. So that title, which I really shy away from, is something that was definitely given because of his vision and then me carrying out the vision. And so when I do my workshops and when I talk to ministers of music and worship leaders, I say, listen, stay connected to the vision of the house because the vision of the house can ultimately bless you because everything that I am, the reason why we're sitting here today wow. is because of the vision of Bishop Charles E. Blake Sr. Oh, we all love you. We love, love, <laughs> love, 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 love you. Thank you have re-released Raise the Praise. Yes. This was done first in 2000. 2002. I re-released all of my old music. Okay. Um, I own all my masters now. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and so because I did not have the engine behind me, it became very difficult at the time to do it. So now I'm being introduced to a whole nother generation. Yeah. And people are like, oh my goodness, I didn't know you wrote that song. Or I didn't know, you know, they've done covers of the song and things of that nature. So we're really excited about what God is doing in this season. And I believe it's the sound even of the season to give a new fresh and something with foundation. Yeah. You know, because a lot of the music today, even though I love it and we jam to it, and we party and all of that, <laughs> some of it, it doesn't really have any weight to it. And so we, we um, when we worship God, we must make sure that we have something that is stable. Mighty Fortress is our God. Those are the hymns of the yeah. church, you know, blessed assurance. You know, you think of those songs when you're going through. And so to God be the glory. The day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Come on. Exalt him. 
and you can get new copies of at least four of Judith's older projects. As you've heard, she's re-released the music wherever you get your music. They include Raise the Praise, Send Judah First, In His Presence, and Sound the Trumpet. It's available now on all music platforms. For more uplifting music, join us tonight for a special edition of Studio 5. We're looking ahead to this year's Dove Awards, which will be handed out October 18th in Nashville. We're sitting down with some of the nominees, including Ann Wilson, Katie Nicole, and Doe Jones. You can catch Studio 5 on the CBN News Channel at 8.30 Eastern. You can also download the CBN News app and watch it on demand. Stay with us. Your Wednesday Word is coming up next. Time now for your Wednesday word, and today's word is freedom. I need you to remember this. True freedom is found in Jesus. There is no bondage in faith in Christ. In the words of a very popular song, I am no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. Take hold of this truth and it walk in freedom today. It is true no matter what you feel like, what it looks like, or what you are seeing. You are free when you have Jesus Christ in your heart. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time, as well as online, cbnnews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can email us. The address is right there at the bottom of your screen, newswatch at cbn.com. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. Make it a wonderful Wednesday. Join us back here tomorrow.